Welcome to week 14. That leaves um, two more weeks after this before you've completed this class. How exciting for you guys. Summer's almost right here. Um, and those of you who are going to take summer school, good for you. Those of you that are going to work and expand on your knowledge, good for you guys too. Um, this week we're going to talk about blogging. Bloggings become important um, in schools and in the classroom part of that Charlotte Danielson model that I was talking about last week, but also just as a way to keep um, information relevant for the students. No longer will they just collect information for themselves, but they also are expected to reflect on that information and to share that information to some degree, which leads to the discussion post this week. Um, with complications of privacy, how open shouldn't students writing and reflections be in any classroom? And I'm going to talk just a little bit about what I used to do in the classroom. Um, but this week what you're going to do is you're going to read and watch a video. Um, these again are located in the content. Um, all dealing with blogging. I'm sure some of you already blog. If you have an existing blog, you're welcome to use that one. Um, but in your creation of the blog this week, um, you can use an old one, you can use a new one, you can use one that has a specific focus that you might use in the future. Um, so my students um, for the last 20 years have all blogged. In the last 15 years they actually did it on the computer um, which meant that their work was actually out to the world. Um, this is the way I collected information that was being written by my students. Um, most of them used a program called WordPress, which is also a way to create web pages. Um, so it's a nice combination of blogging and web design that a lot of people use, mostly because it's free, um, which again, that's primary in my head. If we have to pay for something, it's not really worth using um, for the most part. So what you're going to do this week, after you write your discussion post, is you are going to, I'll make this just a little bit bigger, is you are going to create a blog. And that blog needs to have a specific focus to it. And I'll show you mine here in just a second. Um, it needs to be used as a tool for communicating. And that communication, again, it needs to be looked at through the lens of a teacher. How would a teacher use a blog? Why would a teacher use a blog? What's the purpose for the blog that you're creating? Um, you've only got three weeks left. Um, and you will notice here that you're going to create the blog and then to get full credit you have to post a new blog once a week which means that you're going to post one this week once you create your blog and you'll post one then the last two weeks so total you'll have a total of three for me that's not not real real bad and not real time consuming um, but again I'm looking for those blogs to be relevant to your world and to a future classroom Again, mimic what you might do in your own class. If you use other people's information, make sure you cite stuff correctly. That's just common sense, right? Um, you're going to post those blog links um, to D2L and put that on the discussion board. That's actually what that should say. Um, it should say instead of post it, the link to D2L, it should say link to the discussion board. Um, and everybody should be looking at everybody else's blog, what somebody else created. But you're also going to grab those blogs and you're going to create an aggregator. An aggregator is an RRS reader list. And I will show you my aggregator. I use a program called Feedly. And Feedly will gather every blog I look at. Um, I also used it as a form of data collection. So I didn't have to go out and do I don't have to go to US Day, USA Today every day. I don't have to go to their website every day. It's right here. So every day I can look at, and you'll notice I haven't looked at a lot of these, right? It'll gather all the Dilbert daily strips. It'll gather new urban legends. Um, educational technology, I've got several blogs that I follow, um, but it will gather them all in one location so that I don't have to go out and go to the web. It gathers that information for me. I will show you here a uh, list of mm, these right here. So let's do this. If you know any of these people, I think they'll be fine. I'm not going to show you their blogs. I'm just going to show you how it collects. So 
these are all of the writings that this student did in my class and he did it on WordPress this program right here WordPress um, three different views and I'll explain those in just a minute but I didn't have to go to his individual blog his blogs came to me because it aggregated here um, it's a little bit like um, I think if I can think of a good analogy um, it's a little bit like when you're setting your DVRs I can set my DVR to record every MASH episode that plays on any channel and then I just have to go to my DVR to watch MASH if I were to have to go to all the different channels that showed MASH then it would take more time it takes more effort I have to actually look for things um, and, and life gets a little more complicated and we're all busy people so the aggregator really is the only thing that aggregator is going to do is it's going to collect the blog that he wrote and bring it to me now like I said I use WordPress um, because it's free but it's also um, very easy to use and this is my blog um, I will post that in my discussion post you're welcome to join it you'll notice I haven't posted here since 103 um, semesters kept me fairly busy and you guys should all not follow that example we should be posting once a week once a day should be writing a lot more it's a great reflection tool um, this is the different view same program just a different view and another view that you can look at is this one as well and when you get into whichever blogging program you choose to use you should get to know it really well and figure out how it works figure out how you can add an avatar if you want to figure out how you can share it out every time I write a blog it goes to um, Twitter and it goes to feedback uh, feedback Facebook so that I don't have to go in and intentionally post it it just shares it out there automatically and again you want to keep that in mind because there may be times where you don't want to share whatever it is that you're posting about um, and this again is just a different view it's just the profile side of this um, again whichever site you choose to use to create your blog you are going to want to get to know it really well um, I think WordPress is one of the simplest to use but again try a few there are multiples out there find one that works for you and make that work okay so here's what alright so you're gonna create that blog you're going to post your link to your blog, the, the way we can find it and access it, um, on the discussion post in D2L. And everybody needs to collect your peers' blogs. And again, you don't have to collect them all, but you can collect a few and add those to an aggregator. Again, the aggregator for me would be Feedly. And you're going to figure out how that, that aggregator works and how the blogging works. Now probably the worst part of this whole thing you have a flipped lesson that's due on Thursday that's the 13th this blog account needs to be posted so you need to have a blog created by Friday and put into the discussion post um, it's easy enough just to do a simple post to make sure everything is working but you don't necessarily need to write something that's really expansive and then you can go away for the um, long Easter break and not have any homework to do and there you go um, again if there's any questions don't hesitate to contact me um, or come see me either of those things work I'm around um, alright everybody have a nice Sunday